Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is lesson 1.1. In this video, we're going to look at naming and sketching some different geometric figures. Now in geometry, there are these things called undefined terms. And like the name implies, these terms don't have any formal definitions, but every mathematician around the world agrees as to what these things are and how they're represented. We're going to have three undefined terms. We'll have points, lines, and planes. Those are the three most basic geometric structures that we can create. And pretty much everything else that we do in geometry is based on points, lines, and planes. So our first object is a point, and a point is just represented by a dot. You're probably pretty familiar with points from algebra and doing like graphing. Points help us show locations out in space. They don't have any actual size to them, so even though we can draw these things out with a dot, um, they're actually infinitely small. We wouldn't be able to see them with our naked eye, but we do draw a dot that's visible just so we can talk about these locations. Now if we look over on the far right hand side, we have a picture. We have a dot with a capital letter written next to it. When we're talking about naming points, we use that capital letter to help us identify what specific point we're talking about. So if we were to name this object drawn out in the picture, we would name it point A. Now our next structure is a line, and lines are straight paths that extend in two opposite directions without end, and lines are made up of an infinite amount of points. There's two different ways that we can name a line. We could use two points that show up on the line, or we could use a lowercase letter. So if we look at the picture on the right hand side, there are two points on this line, point B and point C. One name we could give to this line is line BC. The way we show it's a line is by actually drawing a little line over the top of it with two arrowheads on each end. Now order is not important when we're naming a line, so we could also name this thing line CB, again with a line over top with two arrowheads on it. Now if you also look in the picture, there's this lowercase l. It doesn't have a point because there's no dot next to it. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that we can use a lowercase letter to name this line. We could just call this thing line L. Our last structure is a plane, and a plane is a flat two-dimensional surface that extends without end in all four directions. It doesn't go up or down, it's just a two-dimensional object, but it doesn't stop at these outer lines. Planes are also made up of an infinite amount of points. When we're naming a plane, we use three points on the plane, or we use a capital letter. So if we look at the three points on this plane, we've got point D, point E, and point F. So we can name this thing plane DEF. Again, order isn't important as long as we just use these three points. So it could be EDF, it could be FDE, it could be FED. They're all the same plane. Now if we look down at the bottom left hand corner, there's also this capital G that doesn't have a point next to it. It's working kind of like that lowercase l above with our line. We could name this thing plane G instead of using those three points. Now while we're talking about lines and planes, I do want to mention these things called collinear points and coplanar points. Collinear points are just points that show up on the same exact line. So let's say we had this line drawn out and we had points A, point B, and point C on it, then we would say that points A, B, and C are collinear, since they're all on that same line. Coplanar works very, very similarly. So if we had a plane drawn out, and let's say we have point D, point E, and point F on this plane, then these three points are coplanar because they're all on the same plane. They're all on the same flat surface. Here we've got a few examples to run through with naming some different objects. So we've got our picture on the right hand side, which we're going to use to help us out. Number one says we want to give two different names for the line FG. Now remember, order is not important, so we could name this thing line GF. Again, putting those arrowheads on the end of each line to show that it is actually a line. There's also a lowercase b written next to our line, so we could call this thing line B. Number two says give two other names for plane R. So when we're naming a plane, remember we need three points. We do need to be careful because the three points cannot be collinear. They can't be on the same line. So we couldn't say HGI. We couldn't use that combination of three letters since they're all on that same line. But we could go like HJ 
i because point j is not on that same line. Or if we wanted to give another name for it, we could go g, j, i, again using point j since it's not on that line with those other points. Now three wants us to name three collinear points and I kind of gave this one away already. These would be points h, points g, and point i. Those three things are all on the same line, so they're collinear. Number four, if we wanted to name four coplanar points, well, there's only four points on this plane that we can see. It would be point H, point G, point J, and point I. Those four points are all on that same flat surface. A few more vocab words to take a look at. We've got a line segment array and opposite rays. Again, we'll do a description, how we name them, and then we'll draw out a picture. So first, for that line segment, it's very similar to a line, but instead of extending out in both directions, we've got a couple of endpoints, and our line stops at those endpoints. So if we take a look at our picture, we've got point A on the left side and point B on the right side. When we're talking about naming this object, we're gonna use those endpoints to help us out. Just like with a line, the order does not matter. So we could name this thing AB, and we're gonna put a little line over top of it. Now I'm not going to put arrowheads on each end since we're just talking about a segment and it stops at those points. We could also name this thing BA since order is not important. Again, not putting the arrowheads on either end since we're stopping at those two endpoints. Our next vocab word is a ray, and we've got one endpoint, which we call the initial point, but then our ray extends out in one direction without end. So again, looking at this picture, we've got C as the end point or the initial point, and then our ray extends through point D, and it keeps going, and it's got that arrowhead on the end to show that it keeps going. When we're naming a ray, we start with that endpoint, so order is very important here. We would name this ray CD, and we'd show a ray over top of it, no arrowhead on the left side, but we will have an arrowhead on the right side to show that we're extending through point D. Our last vocab word is opposite rays, and these are two rays that have the exact same initial point, but extend in opposite directions. And when we draw these things out, it's going to look like a line, but there are, in fact, two different rays here. If we look at this picture, we've got this ray that starts at E and points to the left through point F. I've got that one highlighted in red, so we would name that ray EF. We've also got this ray that starts at point E and then heads out to the right through point G. We would name that one EG. So if we were talking about opposite rays, we would say that ray EF and EG are opposites, since they're pointing in opposite directions. Here's another example of doing some naming with a few of our vocab words. So number one says we want to give another name for the segment LM. So we're talking about this piece of our line that runs between point L and point M. The only other name that we could give to that thing is ML because order's not important. And we're going to put that segment over the top with no arrows on it. Number two wants us to name all the rays that have the endpoint of K and then we have to identify the pairs that are opposite rays. So point K in the middle is going to be our initial point, so we could have the ray that goes from K to J. We could have the ray that goes from K to L, working our way around this picture. We could have the ray that goes from K to M, and our last ray would go from K to N. Now as far as the ones that are opposite, we would say that KJ, and KN are opposite, since they're pointing in opposite directions. We've also got ray KL and ray KM being opposites, again, since those are pointing in opposite directions. Last thing we've got to talk about is the intersection between some of our objects. Two lines are gonna intersect at a single point. So we've got this red line and this blue line. I have their intersection point highlighted. If we've got a line and a plane intersecting, that's gonna happen at exactly one point. So I've got this line drawn going straight up and down, and then we've got our flat two-dimensional plane. Part of our line is dotted, and the reason that's happening is because our line is passing through this plane. So as we're looking at the picture, part of our line is actually hidden, but it's still there, so that's why we show it as being a dotted line. 
on the far right hand side two planes are going to intersect at a line so we've got this blue plane and we've got this green plane again dotted lines showing that part of that would actually be hidden from view um, but these two planes are intersecting at this red line that's going to be it for this video thanks for watching